Sarah Reitzman. I'm the Community Engagement Coordinator for New Hampshire Housing. This walk has been organized by Exeter's Housing Advisory Committee and the Workforce Housing Coalition of the Greater Seacoast. And we partnered with the New Hampshire Planners Association to invite some planners from outside of Exeter to join us on this and see what's going on in Exeter. So this walk is a continuation of a project that we started that's the uh, Exeter's Housing Advisory Committee. Uh, and we've been working on it for a few years now. So our goal was that we wanted to show housing in Exeter and that doesn't jump out at you because it fits in so perfectly or because it's a single family house that's been converted into a quad and you can't really tell from the street and sort of we're going to talk a little bit about that like community character and what does it mean for housing to fit into your community. For those of you in Exeter while we're walking just a couple of like prompts for you to think about and help generate some discussion. Uh, while we're walking and we're looking at housing, how well does that housing fit into the community? And more importantly, why? What does it mean for housing to fit into the community? Um, and how does the housing that we have contribute to the vibrancy of Exeter? For those of you elsewhere, for some of them, it'll be really obvious that it's multifamily housing, but for some of them, would you even have known that it was multifamily housing if we didn't tell you that it was multifamily housing? Would it fit in your community? And again, sort of why or why not, what does it mean for, a, for housing types to fit in your community? So with that, let's head out on our walk. Yeah, first, thanks all for coming. I'm Dave Sharples, the town planner of Exeter. And the role I'll play on the walking tour is stop and just give you some the same couple of facts, few facts for each of our stops. And one of the purposes is to understand density, what density looks like, and what the land productivity is. So I'm going to give you a couple stats and I'll, I'll explain them. But here, this is the first one. This is Exeter Mill. And it was a project that it was an old mill building that were renovated. And 143 units. It goes well beyond where you can see. It goes down to the to the lagoon. Uh, so 143 units on seven acres, 7.01 acres. A density of 20.3 units per acre. In planning, we, we like to look at that for comparison purposes. For you know how dense is it? You know is it 20 acre, 20 units per acre? Is it one unit per acre? A lot of zoning in New Hampshire is like what one one unit per two acres or one unit per one acre. I mean this is 20.3 units per acre. The value, the total assessed value per acre of this development is $3,359,900. That means the assessed value of this property is is a total of about, you know, what like about $23 million. You divide that by the acreage and you get about 3 uh 3.35 million dollars of value per acre. That is like the I look at that as the land productivity, the productivity of the land. How how productive is the land? Because the less land you use and the more taxable value, the more productive that land is and it can have environmental benefits, social benefits and particularly fiscal benefits because you're get, getting more you know revenue for, for the acreage you know so I, I'm not a big fan as I mentioned at the select board the other night I'm not a big fan of saying government should run like a business and it's particularly because of the public interest and public safety and so forth but when it comes to land productivity utilizing land to its full potential and getting that assessed value per acre and getting more just helps the fiscal situation, the fiscal situation of a town. So I'm going to give you those facts on all of them and you'll start to see the correlation between density and assessed value per acre. And generally the more dense you get, it's not true in every case, but your assessed value uh, per acre will go up. And some of them on our tour are really high. So we'll, uh, we'll talk about that at each one. Well, yeah, thank you. Awesome. And remembering our prompt questions, thinking about does this fit? It definitely fits in Exeter, right? A historic building, a, a mill that's been uh, reused. Would it fit in your community? Not every community has a, a big mill. And this is a sort of a big example of multifamily housing. This is a, um, a conversion that was converted to, I believe, five condominiums in this in this one building right here yeah the gray one um, and then it went from apartments and then obviously more value with condos and they decided to condominiumize it so there were five condominiums there um, the lot obviously can handle it 
um, there's enough parking and things like that and that's one of the things we look at but so that was a, a what we call a conversion into Yep. Can, I, can I just, no, just yep. to color that in, although multifamily is not an allowed use in the zone, yep. residential conversions are allowed, which allows you, as long as you meet certain criteria, you meet the dimensional requirements, you can supply the parking, you can, you can take a single family home and create up to four additional units. So I mean not four additional, three additional for a total of four. So you can make that is allowed in the zone, well maybe not five is allowed in the zone, but single family homes you can convert to four by special exception through the ZBA. It's not a, it's not a variant situation, it is allowed Permitted via special exception. You know, pretty interesting project. Uh, on the walk it's the only single family development we're going to see. And it's actually single family homes, uh, but with a density that you don't usually see. And this is a 1.882 acre site and it has 13 single family homes. It's a condo development, so this is all maintained in common by a homeowners association. Uh, and it has a value, of, it's 7 point, well first, 7.14 units per acre as far as density goes. So it's on the lower side, but a lot higher than most single family home densities you'll see in other parts of town or the surrounding region. And uh, it's $2,428,516 of assessed value per acre. So a little over $2.4 million per acre of productivity in this. And uh, they sold out right away. Uh, and one thing, not part of the tour, but this is pretty unique. This is all porous pavement you're standing on. So the entire, the entire roadway in, you can just dump your water and it'll disappear. So one other thing about this, this site, um, this um, is in a C1 zone. So we changed the zoning here. This used to be a C2. We, from the Portsmouth Ave lights to Walgreens, we changed to C1, is that correct, Dave? So we, so this is a commercial zone, but we allow multifamily, uh, maybe it was an open space now, but anyways, it was, oh, it's a permitted use. And the difference between this and the R3, the R3 requires 12,000 square feet of lot area per unit, okay? In the R in the C1, it only requires 3,500 square feet of area lot area per unit. So that's why this was really densified. Okay, so it's a commercial zone, 3,500 square feet of lot area per unit. That was why we got so each one of these, we, whatever the lot size was, we divided it by 3,500, and this is what they came up with. This, this is a pretty unique one so far because we, we haven't seen one of these yet. This is a mixed-use building. It has commercial uses and residential uses. Residential uses are here. Commercial uses you can see on the first floor. This is a great example of a mixed use. I don't, uh, you know, we don't have any history on it. I'd like to know what it was used before. Uh, but this is on a .09 acre lot. So it's just on a tenth of an acre. Basically the building is the lot. Uh, it's got 44 units per acre is the density of this and it actually in this zone you could add another height so you could even add more value to this. I mean you wouldn't because of the historic nature of the structure but you know it, it could be higher and this is value, value per acre on this is four million dollars of assessed value per acre so one of the higher ones we've seen. Uh, and when No this has uh, four units, six, four units over here, two over there so a total of six. And we, we are still, I think we're still in an R3 zone. We are in the R3. So it's a grandfathered use, all these are grandfathered. And we are now entering the historic district. All right, I put this one on the list. It's not a multifamily. It's two commercial units. It's a commercial building with two commercial units in it. There are residential upstairs. They added residential, that's not on the assessing. There was a, a counseling office upstairs yeah. when I was in there. Yeah, Elliot Berkowitz actually added uh, two apartments. Oh, he just added two apartments, so even better. Now it's a mixed use. <laughs> that was not in the assessing database when I just looked the other day. But anyway, two, two, so now it's four units, so it's probably increased in value. But this was part, we did this as a, a charrette 
with Plan New Hampshire to try to figure out affordable housing and what could fit here. There were various options and at that time they came up with uh, the most feasible option was 26 units that would fit potentially on this site. Uh, nothing's came of that yet, but this is in the Mond, which is the mixed-use neighborhood uh, neighborhood district. And just want the reason why I want to show this because this is in the Mond, and what you can do in the Mond is if you do mixed use, there is no density requirement whatsoever. You have limiting, you have a few main limiting factors to growth, and it's usually density, you know, what's allowed per acre, height, and parking. So those are the kind of three, and you always bump into one of those before you bump into the other two. So there's really, in my mind, you know, you don't need all three because you're going to run in. So we removed density as a restriction and said, okay, as long as you can park, and we reduce the parking to one spot per unit instead of, you know, the one and a half, two, however the calculations work. So only you only need one spot per, per residential unit and the planning board has the ability to waive 100% of that parking requirement. They don't have to go to the zoning board of adjustment if they can prove that there's off-site parking or either at another site that they've secured through easement or some legal instrument or there's available on-street parking that's not being currently utilized that could accommodate the, the residents there. So, uh, that we're, you know, this is a definitely a potential project under that ordinance. And uh, just wanted to show you that. And this, this site, it's for uh, 0.46 acres, about a half acre site. And the density right now is 4.3 units per acre, but it's probably more like eight or something now. <laughs> they found out about these two apartments. And the value is $2 million an acre at the moment. But think about if you did a month here and you could go back and do 26 potential units here. I mean, you, you could get, you could quadruple that assessed value per acre. Got, you know, five stories, kind of ones at grade, like a little bit below grade in the front, but there is a five-story building. I'd probably say this is close to 50 feet in height. That's what the allowable in the zone. This one has 24 units on a third of an acre. So the density is pretty high here. It's about 70.6 units per acre. Uh, includes commercial uses. Uh, the assessed value of this is, is about $4.7 million. So pretty, pretty good assessed value. Mixed use. Uh, the benefits of this, like what we're showing you, we, you know, on a walking tour, we can't take you out into the, you know, <laughs> out into the uh, rural parts of town. But just so you maybe get a frame of reference when we're talking about assessed value per acre, if you look at most single family subdivisions that are one and two acres, you're talking about an assessed value per acre of about 150,000 to maybe like 285, 285,000. So when we're sitting here talking, you know, 4.7 million, 2 million, 2.4 million, you know, as a frame of reference, you're usually your single family developments are, you know, in the hundreds, are, are in the hundreds of thousands, somewhere between 150 and 300 on average in Exeter. So these are, you know, 10, 20, you know, 50 fold, some of them that we're going to get to as far as, as value and land productivity. This is, this is another pretty interesting, this is another pretty interesting project. As you can probably have surmised by now, this was a church. And the church... Is it no longer a church? It's no longer a church. The doors open, so we're, I was just saying, is there a service being held now? But it went to, it went to the zoning board and it went to the planning board and got approval to convert this church into 11 units, 11 residential units. And they did make some changes that were approved by the HDC to kind of maybe take out like some of the stained glass and some of the obvious indications that it was a church and make it a more residential feel. It's also going to have some like black, uh, black aluminum kind of wrought iron look type fencing and so forth to, you know, define the uh, limited common space because it will be a condominium complex. Right now, the value breaker is obviously it's tax exempt. But right now, there is we, we do assign a value to it, but then it's not, it's tax exempt. It's $1.9 million per acre. But at a conservative estimate, 
based, I forget what I used, I think I used like 300 or something a unit, uh, this will be 15 million dollars of assessed value per acre. And then the beauty about this project is we've, we're going to add 11 units, but we didn't add, we didn't add one drop of st additional storm water. No additional nutrients flowing into the thing. They actually did a little bit to, you know, to, to make the situation better. No trees needed to be cut down. It was on an existing site. No wetland buffers or wetlands are impacted. And we just add units in value uh, to, to the town. So this is infill development. We didn't have to create any additional sewer lines, water lines, drainage infrastructure. Uh, but it, when this project's done, it's going to probably be close to ballpark around $15 million of assessed value per acre. So very productive land. When we looked at parking, we're also doing a, well, we're proposing to do a pretty in-depth study, but we did a lot of work on the parking and availability of parking. I did a lot of parking counts. I counted the car. We have hundreds, I forget the exact amount, but I think it's over 500 on-street parking spots within two-tenths of a mile of the bandstand that we first started at that's kind of an icon in Exeter. So a two-tenth radius, we have about, you know, over 500 on-street parking spaces. I did a lot of utilization rate studies, came out counting cars. I mean, while there's some spots that, you know, are, are pushing 85 to even 100 percent utilization rates, those are like down by the commercial. Uh, but up here, you know, for example, you turn around, you got Elm Street right there. It has 43 on-street parking spots that get about probably a 90 percent utilization rate during the day from PEA, but then at night it drops to 5, 10 percent. Yeah, second to last stop. We're actually looking across the street. I thought it was a good view. This three peak building that says Merrill on the top of it. This building here, 163 Water Street. I mean, downtown is really where the value, you get a lot of value out of downtown and downtown density. That has, there's 18 units in that building. It does go back, you know, pretty far that you can't see. It's got 11 commercial units and seven residential condos. It's on a quarter of an acre lot. It's got a density of 66.7 units per acre, so really high density. But also the productivity of this land, 15938889 dollars per acre. So almost $16 million per assessed value per acre in this, in this type of density when you get up into the you know, 65, 70 units per acre. So it generates a lot of revenue for the town, commercial uses, mixed use, residential. It's not affordable. <laughs> That's one thing we're working on. I mean, a lot of these places that we're showing you in and around downtown Exeter don't meet the affordability requirements. That's why when we did the MUND, what I said earlier, if someone takes advantage of the MUND, one of the requirements is a minimum of 10% of the units needs to be affordable. So a minimum of one. You know, if they build 15, they got to do two of them. You know, so, and if they don't want to do that, then they revert back to their regular zoning and can't do nearly the density, nor they get the benefit of the reduced parking, or the, they'd have to go to the ZBA if they wanted relief from the parking, and they, they couldn't go as high. They would have to, you know, reduce it to three stories in some spots instead of, instead of the four that you get under the month. And that's an incentive to try to make at least 10% of the stock affordable when we do have a project. But speaking of affordable, we're going to just walk up here, and this is a this is our last site in town. Uh, it actually extends. There's a parking lot associated with this building that extends over next to the town hall where we are. So it's a pretty big lot, uh, but this is on you know about half of it. This is uh, it has 30 units. Uh, there's a several commercial units, and these are all affordable units. They're low. They got when they developer built it, he got took advantage of the low income tax credit. So they're assessed as such. I'm not an assessor, but I, with the few minutes I spent with Janet the other day, because I was like, well, wait a minute, this is, you know, this is $3.7 million per acre. Why is it so much less than, you know, the $16 million over there? She says it's valued differently because it recognizes it's a low income tax credit thing, so it's it doesn't have, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't really repeat what she said, but somehow that that ex, that explained it. the the un, the densities there it's 55.6 units uh, per acre here, and uh, it's been a real successful project. <laughs>